everyone, it's Reagan, and I'm coming at you from my unmade bed and starting this video that I literally spontaneously thought of filming and I thought it might be a fun experiment to see if you guys also like it. So essentially what this video is going to be is a reading and spoiler discussion of Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J Maas. I get a lot of requests to do like spoiler discussion videos and for some reason I don't like filming those as much after the fact. I prefer to do like non-spoiler reviews but as I'm reading books I love to talk about them. As I'm experiencing it either with friends or literally sometimes I'll just sit in my room and talk to myself. I'm weird. So I thought um, this might be an interesting experiment of a video to see if this is something you guys like. So what this video is going to be, it's going to be a bunch of sporadic clips of me reading it and then reacting to the book as it's unfolding. It will be spoilery. I'm going to discuss scenes as they come up. I'm going to discuss feelings as they come up, characters, spoilers. I'm really trying to reiterate a lot of times that this is going to involve a lot of spoilers. But I thought this might be an interesting format to have a spoiler reading vlog of a very popular release because I know a lot of you guys are reading this as well of feelings and reactions so you'll not only get a spoiler review especially at the end once I've read the whole book but also I guess reactions like real time reactions to any of the big things that happen in this book. So. All right, I mean, I haven't started it yet, but if you guys end up liking this video, um, maybe I'll do it for other super popular titles uh, that are coming out and that we can read and then we can kind of have a spoiler journey together. I also just love reading vlogs, so like any version of a reading vlog I can think of, I'm interested in. This will be different than my other reading vlogs in that I'm really only gonna pop in when I'm reading. I'm not gonna film like a vlog style thing and it might be like during the week and stuff. It's really just gonna be about Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J Mass. So let's get started. This is a 996 page book or something like that. So this might be a long vlog and this intro is so long. So now begins the spoiler reading vlog thoughts of Kingdom of Ash. Let's see how this goes. Hi everyone, it's a bit later as you can tell from the dimmed lights and my wet hair. I have my first check-in for you guys, but before I even begin to kind of talk about where I'm at in the book, I realize I'm not quite sure if I was very clear about like expectations, what what I'm hoping for, things like that. So um, Kingdom of Ash, I've actually heard really good things. I already know people that have finished it. I am not close to finishing it yet. But uh, so I'm actually going in with really high expectations. People even said it's better than Tower of Dawn, which is my favorite Sarah J Maas book. So we'll see. I'm not gonna lie. I am still kind of hesitant because Tower of Dawn I love because I love Kale and obviously there's a lot of characters like Lorcan and Alita, Alida, and um, Manon and Dorian. I love, but there are other characters that I don't care as much about, namely uh, Selena, Alien, Selena. I keep, call I always call her Selena still. <laughs> uh, and um, like Rowan. So I'm kind of like on the fence and I'm very curious to see how all of the different POVs are gonna be within this. I'm really hoping there's a lot of kale, but I am doubtful. So kind of in summary, I have pretty high expectations. I'm really hoping I love it and it gives me all the feels but I'm still kind of on the fence because there's like a solid group of characters I love and then there's this other group of characters that I'm kind of like meh about. So I'm interested to see how that goes. As for a first update, I've passed the first 50 pages of this book. Uh, so far, it's really just me getting oriented in the world. Like, I don't know if you guys experience this, especially if you're reading a series as they come out. I forget stuff and I should probably read summaries and things before going in, but that's too much work. Normally I just start right away and kind of try to feel my way through the first 50 pages and I kind of start to get oriented. Um, there's so much going on right now, which I think is interesting. Like we don't, we not only don't just have different POVs, but like people are doing very different missions. And as of now, I've read, I've read an Elida chapter, which loving even though she's with Rowan who I don't care about but Lorcan's there and he's moody and I'm here for it. We have an Adian chapter who is kind of one of the neutral characters for me so we'll see how that goes and yeah so far 
I don't have any like strong feelings. This is just me trying to remember what's going on and just kind of getting oriented in the story. So I'm gonna read more now and I'll update you again once I have more pages down and when I start having the feels and having the questions and theories, we'll see. All right, everyone. I'm already back with an update. Yeah, I'm on page 80 and Sarah J Mass is already dropping mobs that I was not expecting to already have to be uh, checking in so soon. So last time you saw me, I was basically saying, I don't really, really know what's going on. I was just getting oriented. Well, happy to say I'm oriented. Um, how Sarah J Mass is approaching the narrative of the story, I think is smart. It's a bunch of characters. It's a big plot. So she kind of basically has created character pods with different tasks, at least so far, <laughs> 80 pages into this book, likely they'll start to commingle and converge. But for now, we have one pod, which is Lysandra and Adian, who are kind of at the northern front, trying to prevent Marath's armies from destroying a bunch of towns and cities. We then have the Rowan, Lorcan, um, Elida pod and other Fae and they're out searching for Alien and basically roaming the countryside in angst trying to figure out where she is. This is one of my favorite um, subgroups because Lorcan and Elida are life. They're my favorite. Next subgroup we have Manon, Dorian and the rest of the 13 and they're out searching for the Korakian people and the final word, ward key. And then lastly, we have uh, ones that I've come across. We have the Kale, Yarn and Southern Continent Brigade coming up to help everyone um, from the Tower of Dawn book, which is another favorite um, chapter group to read from personally. Actually, I'm loving most of them. I think the pairing is really great. Um, I feel like I have a favorite character in each group. Like Rowan's my least favorite character, but she padded that section with my two favorite characters, like Sandra's with Adian, which makes me love that. Obviously, Kale, Manon, Dorian, Yarna. I love them all. So I'm really feeling these these like narrative couplings right now. Like big fan. So the big drop that I was gonna mention was that. Freaking Yarna, I don't know how to say her name. I'm just butchering everything, but she might be pregnant so soon. They're married, pregnancy. What is that gonna do to the bond between her, her and Kale? Is she not gonna be able to heal him? Um, not that I think he would mind because of the pregnancy. What does that mean? I was getting nervous when we get pregnant. I don't know, but she's pregnant. I wonder if they're gonna have a gender reveal party. Novella alert! Okay, I'm gonna get back to reading. But I'm just like 80 pages in and we already have a pregnancy, guys. Like, 80 pages in a pregnancy. This book is gonna be wild. I can already feel it. Okay. I would also like everyone to know that I'm using an empty fruit strip wrapper as a bookmark. Why? Unsure. Hi everyone, it has been a bit of a minute since I've updated this vlog. So you wouldn't know that because this is a compilation, so time isn't really a thing. But anyway, I wanted to update you because I have been a bit sick, so I've been putting this book aside for a little bit, but tonight I feel it. I'm going to read a lot. So I wanted to update you about where I am, how I'm feeling, what I've seen, what I've read, and the main thing I want to talk about is I'm around the 200 page mark, so I think I'm about one fifth of the way through, but what I'm so shocked about are my favorite chapters. Our first, the alien chapters, Alan, Alan, I can never say her name correctly, um, is by far, uh, are so intense. Like, they are gruesome to read and I just can't help but obviously feel all the like empathy and fear for her as a main character and it's kind of making me like her again. I mean, I don't wanna say like her going through a tremendously difficult time is like what I needed to like her again, but just reading from her perspective separate from all the other characters I think has made me like like her as a main character. Additionally, my favorite like side group as I've mentioned previously, hi Matilda, everyone is kind of in like different bands of like groups um, to accomplish different tasks. My favorite's the Rowan, Lorcan, Elida, Rescue Mission Squad, namely because Lork and Elida are Bay, but I think it's just so like intense and interesting. Like all the anticipation, one seeing Elida like go into town, get the information she needs, like be a total freaking badass. Don't doesn't need magic. 
doesn't need the brute or the muscle of the fae men she's with. She's like, I got this, whatever, bye, I'll get what you need. And then she does, loved that scene. But then also just the anticipation and like the waiting of how they're actually gonna get Aelin out. And I hope they do because dang. Also, aside from the brutal scenes, but the Maeve scenes with Aelin were so intense in that I feel like we got a bit of a snapshot and a bit of like historical reference to why and who and where she comes from which I thought was really really interesting but yeah everything's shaping up to be very interesting and I'm just kind of shocked at kind of my favorite threads right now which I'm actually it's like a happy shock because I want to like all the characters I want to like all the uh the scenes and everything and I'm, I'm definitely leading towards that direction the character that's kind of the wild card for me right now that's kind of throwing me off a bit is Dorian. Um, I just feel bad for him and I want him to like figure out his demons so I'm hoping that happens. But anyway, I'm on page 200. I'm gonna read a bit more tonight of this chunk um, and then I'll get back. I've literally just spent the past like two days watching Love Island ceaselessly. Literally all I wanted to do from my sick bed was watch. Love Island. But now I'm gonna read, so goodbye. Guys, the poetic beauty of what I just read was so good. Everyone's Morgan, Rowan, they're 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 storming the camp, they're gonna save Aelin, and then she just saves herself instead. She's like, no, Karen, evil person, worst person, terrifying person, hate his character. Obviously with help of Fenris. She fucking saves herself. She's just like escapes, is taking names, and they're just like watching her. And then they like sweep her off to safety. I just I just love it. The whole time you're like 250 pages in, they're planning this, they're doing all these amazing things to try to save her, but ultimately, while she like can rely on them and she's of course happy they're there and she needs them when they're there, she still saved herself. It wasn't like someone knocked on the door on her in time of need. Like, when she needed to make her move, when she needed to make her own last stand, she did. And it was epic. And I'm sure she'll have a couple more last stands, but I just, I liked that poetic moment. I was a fan of that. Definitely a fan of that. Okay, back to reading. Oh my gosh, I swear, every like 10 pages something wild happens. First off, the Aelin Rowan reuniting so intense, so sad, so dark. Also, the Fenris blood oath saving his life, but also it's just like so sad to see her be so broken. I mean, it makes sense for everything that she went through, but it's like, it's very hard to read. Back on a Dorian chapter now, who I love man and I love Dorian. Dorian has been a little bit like, for lack of a better word, emo. Like he's been very emo Dorian. Understandably, his life has been kind of crappy, but so is everyone's in this book, so. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I just, I don't know. I hope he finds what he's looking for. Solace, happiness, forgiveness, understanding. And the whole shape-shifting thing is an interesting dynamic, him trying to learn this magic. Obviously, I hope it's not to ultimately just sacrifice himself because he thinks he's unlovable and no one loves him because that's false. But, yeah, I just want him to find his joy again. I don't know. We'll see because he's so emo right now. Aelin's out traversing a cave, but Lork and Elida have their first little conversation and I just reread it like four times. I'm so trash for them. Only waited 320 pages for this to happen and it was a page and a half long. I'm dying. Hi everyone. I'm worried this vlog is terrible and not very entertaining, so just know I did my best. <laughs> I'm going to integrate some like other types of clips throughout this vlog, but I did want to update with what I've read because I'm halfway through. It's official. I'm making my way. I am loving this book. All I want to do is read this book, but due to a variety of different situations, I keep having to put it down to pick up other books, which is fine because it's great motivation to finish this book so I can get back to this book. That all that being said, so much has happened. Like, so much has happened. So let me just catch you up on my feelings and my initial reactions. First and foremost, the Lysandra Adian, Adian scene. Oh my gosh. I just, she's, she's such a boss. Protecting those soldiers, 
basically sacrificing yourself to give them hope to rally so they could then retreat properly. And then obviously she retained her um, human form, which made her incredibly vulnerable. She almost dies, and then Adian, it takes that for Adian to realize that, oh yeah, maybe he was being a, a jerk and really dramatic and taking out his frustrations on her in a way that was unfair. So he's like trying to apologize, and she was like, um, excuse me, you literally threw me out in the snow the other day, and it took me almost dying for you to realize that you're being a, an idiot. She's like, no thank you, we're done, get out of my face. I don't care what kind of revelation you've had, I'm not gonna be okay with how you treated me. And I was like, girl, 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 girl. I want her to run for president. Lysandra doesn't need anyone. She don't need anyone to come to their, she knows what she needs and what she wants and I was there for it. Moving on, we have this huge coalition of characters that have now met at Kale's hometown hometown arena which is this like ramshackle house that's gross but his dad has a lot of treasure at the same time i'm like ew not interested in that guy but so many things occurred in this set of chapters first and foremost sarah j mass is really good at writing combat i don't care what you say like she can write some monumental moments and describe like intense combat pretty well i mean a couple of things to touch on here main star of the show Lorcan, elida my bays, my one true loves they're killing me slowly on the inside ripping me to pieces first and foremost elida and them having that really intense conversation after Lorcan swore the blood oath and she was like literally i don't care anything you do she was like how did you live with yourself living mave and hating yourself at the same time because that's how i feel with you i was like oh girl i was like dead and then though and then though and then obviously Lorcan being emotional to that like goes off in this battle and then gets injured and then freaking Elida goes out on a horse saves him with the water coming but the best part about that scene he was like trying to be a sacrificial lamb and like save her so like she could make it back in time she was like no you don't get to make that decision for the both of us and was like latched onto him so she he couldn't be all like moody and sacrificial she was like no you dummy that's not how this is gonna go and i was like oh god my feelings and then and then freaking after all of that alien comes down from a freaking falcon talons just like comes out of the sky swoops down erupts like a volcano of fire turns this sweeping river tsunami into a sauna essentially and saves the day literally we're 500 pages in this book and so much is happening like every other page, this vlog is gonna be 80 hours long if I don't do these recap things here, which I don't even know if I'm coherent because there's just so much going on. There's so much going on. Oh, by the way, haven't even touched on the whole Manon taking, Manon taking on all of the freaking matrons from all of the other witches and getting the, the, the crown of stars. That was pretty epic. Dorian is still a confusing character for me. I'm like, are you a 14 year old boy going through his My Chemical Romance emo phase or are you an adult i still love him but some of his like lines i'm like who are you and why are you saying this but guys this book is incredible um i'm just i'm freaking out basically and um yeah i am wearing red lipstick because i was shooting some holiday stuff mm. but I mean, I'm gonna finish this soon. I'm about to do a 24 hour reading vlog of not this book, of other books, but then um, this is my main priority. So I will be finishing it and then it's amazing. You should see me on the train. I had to read that Elida Lorcan scene on the train and I was like gasping. I was like surrounded by people and just going <gasps> and people were just like looking at me. And I was like, oh. But I will say one awkward thing is like I've encountered two of um, the infamous Sarah J Maz steamy scenes on the train and i'm not gonna lie with i feel like people are just all around me i just like scroll scroll through i'm like mm, okay something about an entrance <laughs> like done but yeah so that's my update things are just wild 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 that's it that's all i got to say this was a long clip so i'm sorry anyway i'm gonna get back to reading now bye hi everyone it's me I just got home from work i've been editing i have sweatpants on and i'm making some trader joe's orange chicken check it i feel like i'm in an endless loop of a vlog right now i'm vlogging like 14 things at once but that doesn't matter because i just read the elida lorkin healing scene lorkin healed 
by Yerna, Elida comes in. They confess their feelings for each other. I read it on the train. I had to keep my emotions inside as I was reading it on the train. But now that I'm home, I think I'm gonna reread it. So I just wanted to film this clip because it finally happened, guys. Elida Lorcan, they love each other. I love them. I'm surrounded by love. Love, love, love. I love love. <laughs> Hi, everyone. It's me, your girl. She's back. It's the next day. So I wanted to say, I feel like this reading vlog has been a little disjointed, but never fear. I feel like tonight is gonna to be quite the successful reading night. I'm flipping to my most read page because I read a bit on the train. I am midway through the 600 page mark, so I'm truly making quite good progress. But tonight I really feel like I'm gonna get a lot of reading in. I just need to watch the finale, the finale of the Great British Baking Show, and then it's reading time. It's go time. It's go time. So, you're gonna be seeing this sweater a lot, I have a feeling, I really hope so, because this clip will be very embarrassing otherwise. But anyway, time to watch Great British Bake Off, and then it's reading time. Hi friends, have you ever just been a complete failure at life and fall down an internet hole? Cause the same. But don't worry, I got some updates for you about what I read before I go head first into this book. But first important update is I have Flaming Hot Cheeto Crunchies from Trader Joe's, so I've got the snacks and I've got the book. So as I mentioned just a second ago in the previous vlog clip, I'm on page 630 right now, so I have about 360 pages left, roughly, so not much. Some stuff's happening. I think I've already gushed about the Lork and Elida thing, which is my main priority right now. Um, right now I've been reading a lot of Dorian chapters. He's infiltrated, uh, what's it called? Maroth. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. Um, where Arwen's like stronghold is because he's now a shapeshifter and he's made this weird alliance with Maeve and I'm like, what is happening with that? What is gonna happen with, like is Dorian gonna bring Maeve in front of Aelin? Uh, because like, um, she did torture her. So like, I'm hoping this is just like a temporary reluctant alliance and then Dorian's gonna like destroy her in a surprisingly satisfying way. I'm not sure. It's definitely very creepy though. Dorian continues to spiral down this very emo style of character. I just want him to find happiness and solace and like a path in life. I feel like all the characters kind of have a direction in some way, shape or form in that like, obviously Yarna and Kale have like this future that they feel like is at stake and pretty much every character has something similar, aside from Dorian. Like, obviously his survival is at stake, but like, I just want him to have happiness, like friends or a country house, a hobby, like maybe he should take up painting. I don't know, but I just want him to like, find some peace, you know what I mean? Like some, something to hope to grab onto. Cause like, his, min, his relationship with Manon is like, not necessarily something I would call healthy. <laughs> But uh, anyway, I'm gonna read now, so, doodles. Just bombed a little in my mouth, good thing I hadn't started eating my spicy Cheetos yet, when Maeve turned into Aelin to try to seduce Arwen. Ugh, gross. This standoff that's occurring at Briarcliff. Holy crap, 100,000 soldiers, those witch towers are freaking terrifying. Also kind of giving me like, Lord of the Rings vibes like it's not anything like Lord of the Rings but you know what I'm talking about like those epic epic battles that are coming where you feel like evil coming and marching towards like the last remaining stronghold and everyone's on the walls watching them approach and it seems so impossible so unlikely how are they gonna be able to pull out a win like what are they gonna do I'm waiting for that what are they gonna do checking them this book is like ceaseless ceaseless okay she got me good with that Dorian storyline. First off, I was like, why is he working with Maeve? He's confusing me. I don't know what's going on. But then he literally double jeopardy her. Is that what it is? Blind, double blind side? I don't know. They were both tricking each other. Like he knew he was gonna try to, he was gonna betray her. So he set the seeds for her betrayal to make her feel safe so then he could trick her. It was great. And I thought I think he stole his, her powers, like some sort of vampire magic wielder. That's interesting. Dorian is becoming the dark, scary, ruthless, lovable hero that we've all wanted him to be. I've eaten a lot of Cheetos. 
But it seems like everyone is, you know, leaving. I also think he declared his love for Manon, which I hope they work that out. They're both very stubborn. I just want them both to be happy. So much has happened. Marath just got, Marath's towers literally just fell down. Guys, Manon just came out of the sky and saved the day and it was so epic. She was like, how many? See for yourself. There's like thousands of witches. <laughs> And then Adian was like, I love you, Lysandra. And she was like, bitch, why do you say this? <laughs> oh my god, but that Manon savior scene, most epic scene. It's up there with Aelin's, like, wall of flame. But, like, her line is so good. She's like, we came to fight for what she promised us. Ugh, with her star of crown. Crown of stars. Ugh. The Crouchens have returned at last. I feel like something bad's gonna happen. I'm on 730, page 30. And there's about a lot of battles. I, Aiden just got stabbed in the armpit. And Elida and Lorcan just did it. <laughs> um, which I'll say was probably the most restrained, like, steamy scene I've ever read from Sarah J. Mass. I didn't mind it. Normally, I'm not gonna lie, I skim those scenes, because... I, I kind of usually find them kind of hilarious like they're just funny like word choice but um it's just generally it's not like a genre I generally read uh but the Lorcan Elida one was kind of sweet it was very restrained for a Sarah J Maz book I'm gonna read some more but I'm like really scared I feel like something's gonna happen and I'm not sure you know when you get to the end of, the end of a book and you like know something that's gonna happen so you start taking like count of all your favorites and you're trying to figure out like of them who do you think is most likely to die and who do you think you could be the least sad with with dying? I, I can't handle Elida or Lorcan dying. I won't be able to handle it. But I feel like they already, they already had a near death experience. Clay's home. So I'm worried about Lysandra to be honest. I'm worried about her. Very worried. Hi friends. It's a little later. I have about 200 pages left. I've barely read anything tonight because I'm so tired and I came from, from home from work and I spent most of my time researching dog coats for Matilda. Good news, I found one and I bought her a sweater. So she should be all set for the cold weather season. But my reading definitely suffered because I really spent a very long time researching dog coats, which, you know, judge me if you will. But I do have a few updates for you guys, and I'm going to try to read more tonight. But I, I am tired. It snowed today in New York, and it was miserable. I just got home, and I just got in bed and laid in shop for dog coats. Because I was like, Matilda needs warmth. <laughs> it was so cold. Um, anyway, though, on page 765, so much has happened. First off, this morning I almost cried on the train because I was reading, and... Uh, there's a couple of like basically the four groups have turned into two groups We have the group that is at Terrison kind of making the final stand against Erewhon's Giant army and then last time I spoke to you I was like man and came and she was so epic and then the battle was happening and then the 13 sacrificed themselves To save or to destroy the witch tower and it was so moving and so intense and sad and then oh god yeah i almost cried on the train it was a lot it was a lot and then dorian obviously appeared and then kale and his reunion was so sweet and but then immediately they had to start discussing like who's gonna sacrifice themselves to you know turn in these weird keys at the point where i just don't feel like either of them are gonna die like dorian and elaine and alien aren't gonna die i could be wrong but Rowan just had the idea of like, oh, you guys could go together and you should give like half of yourself. So I wonder what that means if they do do that. Like, will they lose their magic? Will they become like mortal? I'm gonna try to read more tonight. I'm so close to finishing this book. I'm really liking it. But the filming reading it has made a complication because I feel like I should always have a camera nearby and then I can't read it during the weekends because I'll film other reading vlogs. It's so complicated, guys. It's so complicated. But anyway, I'm going to finish it in the next few days definitely guaranteed guys dorian's father just showed up and i am shook i am 
Shook. Quick Rice and Freya cameo. I didn't realize it was going to be a collab. A little crossover element. This is a terrible angle. I suck at vlogging. Hi friends, it's me. I'm back and I am here to declare I'm about to finish this book. I have 130 pages left and it's going to happen. It's going to happen right now. It's going to happen tonight. Before I get to reading, I wanted to update you about what I read because I feel like the last thing I said was something to the effect of like Dorian's dad sh showed up. I am shook, which I still am. So much has happened so quickly. First and foremost, I want to say like, I never thought for a second Alan or and Dorian were going to die from the log. I knew something was going to like pop up to save them. That being said, I didn't know what. So Dorian's dad showing up, very unexpected, was not anticipating that even for a second. So that was quite the interesting like plot layer. Also, the thing that confused me, like that whole gate closing thing, confused me for a lot of different reasons. One, why did Aelin choose to say like, never mind, don't take Arwen, leave Elena, and you know, with the one she loves most? Like, it just seemed weird. Like, why would Aelin go through the trouble of sacrificing herself in her entire life to save Elena when she could save the entire world by banishing Arwen? Like, I don't really get the choice. And then obviously the gods, saying no and then leaving and then she opens up like the hell realm and dumps it into the god realm dang i feel like that's also setting up for some angry vengeful gods fighting their way back to their realm but we'll see but anyway that whole move confused me i felt like it was done to get rid of the war the weird key element so there can be this final battle stand because we didn't because there's basically like two things that can happen they defeat arrow one somehow magically and like intensely in a battle or they like close the gate and they seal Arwan back into the realm where he belongs right they take him with him so i feel like by making her choose elena like present allowed the plot to progress to like a final battle scene which in a lot of ways is a lot more entertaining than just sealing him in a gate but i was a little confused by that whole interaction that being said they didn't die i'm not surprised but the big moment is when they showed up oh my gosh on the battlefield in Terrasan, Aranth. Is it Aranth or Terrasan? Is it the same place? Someone help me. Um, that Those battles, this battle scene, the siege has been so intense. So intense. Adian and Lysandra and Manon, oh my gosh, it's been brutal to read, brutal. And I mean, obviously, Aelin was able to get there in time with help of the King of the North, which was an interesting surprise. Um, and now she's here. But I'm really anxious to see how this book is going to resolve because Aelin, as we know, doesn't really have as much power. Part of the consequences of the word key and choosing to try to protect Elena and forging this lock and surviving when she basically gave up the entirety of her power. So I'm intrigued to see what's going to happen in the end. Again, really liking this book. I'm going to eat some hot Cheetos now and get to it and get to it. I'm reading it very quickly. Matilda. Maeve and Arrowin showed up. Alien is facing them even though she has no magic at the gate. I have no idea how she's gonna succeed. I feel like she's gotta convince Maeve to turn on Arrowin. That's like the only way, like girl power, you know? You gotta stick together. Gotta stick together, Matilda. Gotta stick together. I've eaten so many Cheetos, but Uranus being dragged into this. If anything happens to her, I will not be okay with it. Hale deserves better. Don't you do this to Kale or Yerna or their unborn child? No, no. Honestly, Yerna is the MVP of this entire freaking series. She just like is the source of positively love, light. She literally burned Arwen away with her niceness and power. Like she literally was like, "All right, I guess I'll go save the world." Touched him, he incinerated. Year enough for president. I mean, my God, she's the best character in this series. She's the best. She's the best. The best. We should have had an eight book series about Yerna because inspo, she needs a talk show. Hi, I finished it. It was really good. Wow, I can't believe I finished that book. I'm really proud of myself. Um, okay, time to get my thoughts together. 
I really liked it. I thought it wrapped up really lovely. I mean, the final battle was incredibly intense and the fight against Arawan Yerna being basically the MVP of this entire book and then the defeat of Maeve. Um, weird thing to say, I'm honestly surprised less people died. Like I thought there would be like more tragedy, which isn't a bad thing that there wasn't a lot of tragedy. I sound like a mean, evil person. Um, it was really good. I also really enjoyed that she gave us like 30 pages of after, you know? Like the rebuilding and everyone coming together. There were some really sweet moments. In fact, it was just really touching. I particularly just want to know more about Dorian and Kale and Yerna. Yerna wanting to start her own Towers of he Healing and then Dorian and Manon having like their little thing. I don't know. I just felt this great feeling of hope and peace and conclusion. I feel like this conclusion was well earned and well written and I appreciate the thought and care that she took to give us a good like tying up a lot of loose threads and kind of giving us a peek of the future after we've worked and they've worked especially so hard for you know eight books to um you know achieve so it's nice to get a piece of what the after actually is and not just the journey yeah, I thought this book was really good. It was satisfying. It was very well paced. It had moments of surprise and shock. I think she shifted between all the perspectives very effectively in that like, I mean, there's a lot of characters to juggle and I think she started out in pockets and slowly brought them together. There was intense plot lines. It wasn't just a build up ultimately to the end. There was a lot in between to keep you entertained. I actually liked Aelin a lot in Rowan. Like in this book, I liked them the most I have ever liked them as they are always my least favorite characters and obviously my favorites it was so nice to see them and kind of come into their own finally you know Elida and Lorcan seeing well Yurna has always been in her own she's always been a an amazing character <laughs> and Dorian and everyone it was just nice to see them grow from this book I don't know I just I really enjoyed this final novel it definitely was highly entertaining it sucks you in so good. I feel like we're not done in this world though. I think like evil is banished, but I bet there'll be like a novella following Dorian and Yerna and stuff. At least maybe I hope so. This could just be coming from hope. But yeah guys, I read it. Wow. Does that mean this vlog's over? I feel like I've been doing this for my whole life. Hopefully this wasn't a terrible vlog. Hopefully you thought what I found my reactions interesting. I don't know. But yeah, this book was really great. My favorite scene was definitely Yerna destroying Arwen with her hands. Like, ha! Ah! I also liked um, the scene when Aelin walked through her kingdom with all the women and everyone who helped her and had her whole kingdom walk with her. It was a nice scene and like I could really visualize it and it, again, just felt like a really nice conclusion. But yeah, wow, okay. I read it. I have, I feel like I need to think and reel on this book for a while, but very satisfying, very good. I can't believe it's over. I can't believe it's over. This was like my first booktube series, like big series that I got into so long ago. I think I was a freshman in college, maybe before, maybe before then. So wild. Well done, Sarah J. Mass. Well done. Well done. I think I'd give this five stars. I don't know, I just, I can't think of anything I really didn't like. I thought there were so many great, satisfying moments and uh, yeah. Gosh, I'm being so inarticulate. I'm like so chill, it's because I'm like, my brain is like a little mind blown. I'm like sitting here like, I just finished this. Oh my gosh, what do I do now for the rest of my life? <laughs> but anyway, I'm sure I'll have another clip ending this vlog because this can't handle anything else. <laughs> Hi everyone, it's me. The next day, I have officially absorbed everything I need to absorb. I feel like the last clip I was trying to end this vlog, but was kind of out of my own mind. There was a lot for me to digest, but I've come back in, dust jacket and all, to chat about the end of this series. Feels like an end of an era in many ways, but Kingdom of Ash, man, what a ride. I honestly felt like this was a wonderful concluding novel. I really do think I'd give this book five out of five stars. I really feel like Sarah J Maas did a wonderful job of kind of giving the reader everything we could hope for and then obviously still surprising us and not giving us 
everything because we still needed to have moments of pain and sadness and I feel like she did do that um, as well. Ultimately, I really liked it. It's so wild to think that this series is done, but I'm glad I read it pretty much almost from the beginning uh, as they were coming out. And yeah, it was such a fun ride. It was such a good book. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this read along with me spoiler reading vlog experience. Um, definitely something new, so uh, taking any feedback, if you do like it, let me know if you want to see more in the future. Maybe I could do one for Cassandra Clare's upcoming release. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you soon with another one soon. Goodbye!